Um, yeah, I just kicked the camera box. Apparently you can drive a Range Rover over that and it won't break. And I've just tried to drive my foot through it and nearly broke it. Mary, good evening. How are we doing? Going to give people a few minutes to join. Wasn't good, Lee, going to be honest with you. A lot of nearly spilt, spilt my coffee everywhere as well. I did swear. Luckily we weren't live. Um, hope everybody is okay. How's your weekend been? Uh, for those who don't know me as well, by the way, my name is Ross. I'm an actor and voiceover artist from Manchester. Scope twice a week on a Monday and Wednesday night. Um, on Monday nights, which is tonight, we do something called Motivation and Mind Hacks, which is motivation and mind hacks to help you get further in your life faster. Tonight we're looking at authenticity. Um, we're going to go into detail on that in a second. Currently on Marlebone Station, so we'll definitely do catch up. Wow, Nina's l listening out live tonight. Amazing. Well, say hello to everyone on Marlebone Station for me. Um, yeah, let's go up on a Wednesday night as well. We do a book club on a Wednesday night where we look at a book a month for four Wednesdays. Uh, and the book is generally on, again, something that's going to help you get further in your life faster. So at the moment, we're looking at Jack Canfield's book, The Success Principles. I know it looks intimidating because it's so thick. Um, but you should really check it out because um, it's not a difficult read. It's like broken down into like six, seven page chapters. Um, and it's awesome, so you should definitely get it. Um, so do look at that. We're going to do that on Wednesday. Um, yeah, tonight we're looking at authenticity, which comes about because I was, um, I was at a read through today for a new BBC Two drama called To Walk Invisible. She's written by Sally Wainwright. Uh, for those who don't know Sally Wainwright, she's uh, an awesome writer. She writes things like Last Tango in Halifax here in the UK, um, Happy Valley, um, hugely successful writer. See the hearts coming through for, uh, for Sally. And she's written something called To Walk Invisible, which is all about the Bronte sisters and, um, and their you know, kind of uh, rise against adversity, I guess, to get their novels published. So I don't know if, is everyone familiar with the Brontes, Emily Bronte? Anne Bronte, who was the other Bronte? Is it Ellen? Who was the other one? Anne? I don't know, there's a few, there's three anyway. <laughs> three Bronte sisters. Um, Emily's the most famous one I always remember. And um, they wrote things uh, like Jane Eyre, that kind of thing. But initially, they, uh, they had to write their books under a pseudonym because people wouldn't publish like women's books and that kind of thing. Uh, Marit, good evening, how are we doing? Good to see you. Talking about the Bronte sisters for a second, Marek. Um, from Hanworth, near my hometown, says Lee. Awesome. And um, and yeah, they had, to, they had to pen they had pen names. So like uh, Charlotte Bronte, that was the other one. Charlotte's name was Cura Bell. Um, they thought it was a, uh, a you know the publishers thought it was a guy. Uh, they had a brother too. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, they did. Branwell. I think was it was it Branwell. He was uh, a total mentalist, alcoholic, I think. Grave Finder too. Good evening. Um, but anyway, the reason I'm talking about this is that I was at a read through for the, they turned this into Sally Wayne Wright has turned this into a um, a brand new BBC Two drama. Uh, Bramwell says Lee, yeah, it was Bramwell, and um, it's awesome. But normally at a read through, for those who are actors and, and know, good evening Heather. Um, when you before you, you you go to set to film something, they do a read through. You all sit around a big table, and everybody reads. You know the, the show effectively all the executives are around so all the heads of the channel are there it's like a hundred people in this room and all the cast around the table reading and normally i get invited along to read in either the stage directions or I, like today i was reading in for all the males who were cast who couldn't make the read through but today sally wainwright who's written it she never normally kind of speaks up at her own things at all she'll just sit there introduce herself and then let the cast do all the work well i don't mean that in a, in a bad way she just lets them do what they're there to do Today, Sally, because she's directing this as well, decided she would read her stage directions. And because they were hers, she'd written them. She'd written the entire script. She read all the stage directions and delivered it in such a way that was so different to any other read-through, good evening, Sophie, that I've ever been to. So she didn't read them as is. She kind of knew the scene in her head. So she described to the whole room what was going on in this scene in her own way without just sticking to the script. Lee said he's never been to a read-through yet. You will do soon, Lee. It's uh, they're awesome experiences, though. And she was just being so authentic. She was being completely 100% unapologetic for who she is, delivering these, you know, these stage directions in the way she wanted to deliver them, not exactly what was written on the script, in front of all these execs, everybody. They all think Sally's amazing anyway. Um, but it just made me think of the, you know, the power authenticity has. She wasn't trying to be like anyone else or like when you normally go to these read-throughs and stage directions are read in a certain way she was just delivering them 
how she wanted to deliver them. She wasn't trying to be, you know, uh, anybody else in the way that she did that. And it was so refreshing and it was really cool to see. And also the cast was very young as well. The cast of this thing, um, you know, a lot of them were like 19, 20, 21. And I was looking around and I do this. At read-throughs, you'll do this as well when you go to them. You, you're like, right, why have they been casting this? Verona, good evening. Um, and you'll see, you'll check, be checking the cast out and you'll be going, right, okay, why has she got that part? Why has he got that part? And these kids were also quite young, you know, again, they were all being super authentic. Life hadn't dealt them, I hope anyway, the shit that it deals you as you go through it, <laughs> where you have to start kind of sometimes pretending to be something that you're not. They were just inherently being themselves and that's what made them so great, you know, completely unapologetically being themselves and bringing themselves to the roles that they were playing as opposed to, you know, putting on a, a mask and, you know, being you know something too different from themselves so it just made me think of the importance of authenticity so tonight I want to go through with you four reasons authenticity is key to acting success now I did a podcast on Friday if you've not if you've not listened to it yet I did a podcast with a top LA acting coach called Anthony Mindel he's a great bloke who's heard of Anthony Mindel have you seen any of his stuff give me some hearts if you have if you've listened to the podcast yet let me know if you've not listened to it go to actonthis.tv and you'll see it in the podcast section. It's the latest one. If you scroll down the page a bit, you'll see podcasts. And he wrote a book, this book, great book, great title, Book the King Job. And we were speaking about this, and he was saying how he coaches some of the biggest actors in the world. Please just listen to it now. Let me know what you thought of it, Lee. He coaches some of the biggest, most successful actors in the world. And he says the ones who have made it, like the Ryan Goslings, you know, of the world, um, you know, the Kate Blanchett's, you know, the, the big kind of stars right now, the thing that separates them from everyone else is they are inherently being themselves. And we have a whole discussion on how difficult it is these days, or how difficult we find it as human beings, to just be ourselves. Because it's quite difficult in the world that we live in right now, when we're blasted with social media all the time, of this, these people of like, you know, unwavering perfection, you know, this perfect beauty you see on Instagram, because life is photoshopped these days. It does my head in. You look at a picture and you're like, no way. It, who sees these pictures on Instagram where like, I use my mouse, some girl or whatever's in bed and like, you know, she's got looks amazing, flawless and it's like, oh, just woke up. Bullshit! You spent an hour and a half making yourself look like you've just woke up beautiful. You've not just woke up like that. No one wakes up like that. Um, but we, you know, we often see things like that and we're like, oh my God, well, I can't post a picture of myself when I just wake up because I never look like that when I wake up. And we're not, we end up not being authentic. We end up trying to be second-rate versions of someone else as opposed to being first-rate versions of ourselves. Okay, so, um, so I want to go through these four reasons why you should try as hard as you can to just be inherently you and just live with authenticity okay because you're going to live a much happier life the first one and this is key well, these are key to acting career but these are key to life as well you know guys the first one is that when you are authentic and you are authentically you decisions become a hell of a lot easier to make now let me explain so decisions decision making becomes a lot easier effectively if you are absolutely true and faithful to your vision, and you can download these slides, by the way, guys, on the replay. You can take a screenshot now if you want, but you can download these when I put the replay up. You'll get a PDF document of these. If you're absolutely uh, true and faithful to your vision, then nothing will distract you from achieving it. You will no longer, and this is a big one for me when I realise this, you will no longer spend your time regretting the times you said yes, as you'll be better able to say no. So who's done this? How many times have you said yes to your agent and attended an audition you didn't want to go to? I've done it a few times. God, I went to a physical theatre audition once. Oh, it was the worst experience of my life. I hated it. Didn't want to go, but I went just to please my agent. The more clear that you are about your vision and the direction of your career, the career, you know, the direction your career is going, the more clear everyone you work with is on this. So, you know, if you are being authentic to you and a, and a casting comes in and they go, hey, Lee, got this casting for you and um, it's for a commercial for baby wives, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> whatever it would be and you're just like, 
Man, this isn't me. I don't, I don't want to be in this commercial. Nine times out of ten, we feel guilty for actually going, oh my god, there's an opportunity that I've got to say no to because I should say yes to everything because my agent's trying to work hard for me. But then your agent ends up thinking that you do want to go to these things because you always say yes to them. Thus puts you forward for them more often. Thus you find yourself having to say yes to things you want to say no to way more often than, it's, than you know, if you were authentic and initially on that first time went, oh, actually, this isn't the kind of thing that I want to be seen for. Thanks, really appreciate the opportunity, but don't want to waste anybody's time. You would be clearer on your vision of who you are. They would be clearer on, the, on, on their vision of who you are. And you will be put forward for more things that are suitable for you, you know, for actually what you want to do. That physical theatre audition I went to, guys, <laughs> literally, honestly, it's the worst audition I've ever, ever had in my life. I had to phone my agent afterwards and I went, Jane, never, ever, just for the record, put me forward for anything like that again. I only said yes to it because, because I didn't want to offend you. They were making me try and do cartwheels across the room. I went in and thought, I honestly thought, right, well, it's physical theatre. I work out quite a bit. I should be fine. It killed me within 10 minutes. We forward flip, somersault, try and do this. It was like I was an embarrassment to the whole room. Honestly, Verona, she's laughing at me. I was such an embarrassment. I was just like going, well, I can try and cartwheel if you want, but I can promise you I can't. Have you seen that Vine online where there's that slightly heavy girl who tries to do a cartwheel and she goes over and her legs just go bang? It was just like that, but like repeatedly four times till I tried to cross the room. It was like a child just was te I was terrible but I was like why am I here I didn't want to say yes but I ended up saying no to myself in order to say yes to somebody else so um, so when you are authentic to who you are decision making just becomes a shit ton easier for you because you're like is that what I want to do well who are you okay well I don't normally go in for that thing no I'm gonna say no because I've got the guts to say no to it so that's number one do you agree before I, I'm a waffling or I do it, do you agree? Do you think, have you ever done that? Have you ever said yes to something? Hearts are coming through, people agree. Have you ever said, what have you said yes to recently where really you're like, ultimately I should have said no. And it might be as simple as saying yes to coffee with someone when you haven't got time. It can be anything like that. Verona, thank you for uh, sharing the scope on Twitter. I've seen it come through. Um, but yeah, let me know if you've, if you've said yes to somebody and you've actually ended up saying no to yourself because you weren't being truly authentic to who you are. Um, because we all do it, we all do it because we like to be people pleasers and again be seen as you know something that we're not necessarily you know, not necessarily who we, who we are because we're not being you know we're not living with authenticity. Number two, if you are not being authentic, you are holding yourself back. Like I promise you, you are right. If you're holding back the authentic you from shining out because you will you will do things like nobody else does them and this is what I was talking about today Sally I've never heard people read stage directions like that before because they were her own she'd written them Verona says she always does it and ends up putting my own things on the back burner Verona God I was like with you for years on that stop it now say yes to yourself you will be so much happier I did it well, I did it all my life till I was about 27 so like six years ago Stop saying yes to other people and saying no to yourself. Um, but yeah, so if, you, uh, if you're holding back the authentic you from shining, you're stemming the flow of your true personal power. I know it sounds a bit, a bit woo woo, but it's true. And you're depriving the world of all you're capable of bringing to it. Okay, you are the best there is at being you. So why not do it with pride? Why not have pride ultimately in who you are? When we decide to try and live, live, well, live by or compare to someone else's path, which we all do as actors because we look at successful actors on TV and on Twitter and Instagram and go, why aren't I doing as well as them? Okay, when you're doing that, you're comparing yourself to their path, you resign yourself to playing smaller than where your unique magnificence can take you. So you stop taking risks when you're authentic. Tony's here. Good evening, Tony. You've missed the first two points, kid, unless you've been on and you haven't said it yet. It's not showing up yet. But I'll recap at the end anyway. So yeah, so it's point number two, we're talking about authenticity, authenticity, Tony. If you are not being authentic, point number two, you're holding yourself back. So ultimately, put here, you, you know, you are the best there is at being you. So why not have, you know, take pride in that? And if you're comparing, you know, who you are to everyone else on Twitter and Instagram and all those, those other actors who might be, you know, perceived as having more success than you, you're going to play smaller than you could do if you're like. This is me, this is the way I'm gonna do it. I remind myself of this still every day, like almost every day. So, 
you know, in, in everything that I do. You know, I try, even on periscopes like this and just doing them the way that I do them, as opposed to watching other people and going, right, there's a formula, I'm going to have to follow that. I don't see anybody else printing slides out. <laughs> I just thought, I'll do it. This is just authentically me, you know, and, and this is the experience you get when you watch one of my scopes. When you watch someone else's, it's different. And that's better because you're getting more variety in your life. So if you're not being authentic, ultimately, you're holding yourself back. I'm going to read you a quote at the end of this, which sums that up perfectly that Julie Garland says. I think I might have already kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier on. Um, but yeah, just, you know, don't be apologetic for being who you are and don't try and follow someone else's path. The third thing, and you might, you might, let me know if you agree with this. I'm sure if people are honest, they will do. When you, uh, you're authentic, you know, when you, when you can be authentic and just be who you are, you get rid of that fear of being found out. Who's had this? Have I told you the story before I go to the slide? Have I told you the story before about I worked in retail for 10 years and I went to a club one weekend where I used to hang out and it was like a private members club and on my first visit there I got mistaken for somebody else. Um, Justin, good evening. So yeah, I went to this club and I got mistaken for somebody else. Someone who worked really high up in Sony, in Sony's A&R, discovering new talent. The door girl on the club was like, oh, Mr. Grant, it was all mistaken identity, but I went with it. She's like, oh, I want you to introduce you to someone, we've got your table ready, all this kind of stuff. And it was amazing. I was treated like an absolute king. And I was like, right, well, this is really cool. I'm going to have to kind of like live up to this every time that I come to this club and I'll be treated really, really well. Um, hello, Justin, how are we doing, man? And, um, and cheers for sharing, Lee. And then every week I went to this club, I had to put on this persona of this person, right? I did it for three years whilst I was at drama school. It was the most amazing three years I ever had on the social scene going out. But every weekend when I worked in retail in that store that I was working in, I lived with this dreaded fear of being found out. Like someone was going to walk into that store and go, wait a minute mate, I thought you worked for Sony? Like what are you doing working here for minimum wage in, the, in a computer game shop? And I lived with that for three years of my life. So when we're authentic, right? and stop living, we stop living with the fear of being found out, okay, when the persona you, you know, you present to the world is anything other, you know, the completely authentic, you live with the constant threat of being found out, and that is not nice, I live with that, right, and you carry around a restrictive burden of unease, um, that any parts, you know, not congruent with this ideal must remain firmly locked away. And that's not healthy for you, right? When you fully own your truth and openly wear your heart on your sleeve, there is nothing to hide and there's nothing more to fear. You complete, um, your complete vulnerability creates an empowering invincibility. Um, I mention it all the time, the power of vulnerability is just like unprecedented. It, it, it's like, it's so powerful. And people as human beings, we shy away from it because I don't want to be vulnerable. I don't want to show people the real me because then what if they don't like it? Um, someone said to me once, which was really nice, they said, wow, like, uh, you know, I really value our friendship. You know, and you've seen me at my absolute worst and you still want to be my friend. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool because you're human and you're vulnerable and you're not trying to be something that you're not. You're being authentic. You're living with integrity. I like that and I respect it and of course you're gonna make mistakes and you're gonna, you know, sometimes you're gonna be a dick, you know, or whatever, you know, you, you, you know you, your behavior is affected by things that happen in your life and sometimes you handle it better than other times. Um, but when you're not trying to live up to that ideal that's not you, you know, you don't have that fear of being found out and you can just be like, this is me, this is what I am. And hopefully it's good. <laughs> hopefully you're saying, this is me, I'm a serial killer and a psycho. Um, you know, hopefully it is, uh, it is nice, but vulnerability is empowering. It's really super, super empowering. So don't be, ever be afraid to be vulnerable. So that was the third point. When you're authentic, you don't have to live without the, you know, you don't have to live with the fear of being found out. And then the fourth one, and this is what, again, kind of came to me today when I sat in this read through. Um, I mention this all the time. People who are on the, on the stuff regularly will know this. Oh, what's this? Justin says, people spend so much time creating complicated lives of people who don't actually care. Yes. So in, my uh, in my last podcast with Anthony Mindel, keep banging on about it, but go and listen to it on actonthis.tv. Go and listen to it; it's completely free to listen to. 
he said a great Eleanor Roosevelt quote, and it was something like, oh God, it's like people wouldn't care, this isn't it verbatim, but it's like you wouldn't care half as much about what people, you know, people thought of you if you realised how, how, how little, you know, how little they did, like how not often <laughs> they're, they're thinking of you. People, who are we most obsessed with, guys, in life without sounding, you know, we're not being selfish, we're just human beings. We're most, we're most obsessed with ourselves, aren't we? Ultimately, you might think about other people, you know, for 24 minutes of the day, and then you go back for the 24, well, 23 hours of the day, thinking about yourself. Someone will do something to you, and you'll be pissed off with it for a while, or, or, or they'll affect you in some kind of way. And then 10 minutes later, you don't care. It's going back to yourself. And so many actors are afraid to put themselves out there, or just people in general, afraid to make phone calls, email people, because of what people think of them. And ultimately, I just want to say, don't worry, they're not thinking, like, they're not really thinking of you. It's not that no one cares, but like, they don't care as much as you think they do. So don't be afraid or apologetic for putting yourself out there. You never know what people think, only what you think they think. Yeah, it's imaginary circumstances, Justin, isn't it? So you're, you're going to be afraid of the imaginary, uh, you know, the proposed way that you think someone's going to think of you or someone's going to react to you. But it's all just appear. Ultimately, the, the likelihood is that they're not, they're not going to react in that way or they're just you know, going to be so wrapped up in themselves that, you know, unfortunately, they're just not going to care whether you've sent an email to them or not you know hopefully you'll catch them on a good day where they do but don't worry about it send it anyway um, but point number four yeah your DNA and I say this all the time will never exist again once you die once you leave this planet it's never gonna exist and it's never existed before it's completely this this is proper unique shit this <laughs> can't get this from anywhere right so your DNA will never exist anywhere else don't be vanilla now what I mean by that is the flavour that you are, right? People are magnetised to a leader who stands out from the crowd and freely allows their unique flavour of magnificence to shine, right? The few who really live and own their authentic truth, like Sally did today at the Read Through, irrespective of what anyone else might think. Okay, those who go seeking acceptance, admiration and respect by striving to fit into the model of what they think everyone wants, or, you know, and are destined to. Um, yeah, they're, they're destined to blur into the faceless vanilla herd. So it is about that, really. When you're trying to be anything but you, you try to be somebody else. I don't know about you, but I see this on social media all the time. You end up with just a load of people who are effectively peddling the same stuff in the same way. And it just all blurs into this vanilla kind of landscape where no one really stands out and then the few who are being truly inherently themselves are the ones, the leaders who are like, this is me, this is what I stand for, I'm unapologetic about it. Gary Vaynerchuk, for anyone who's into business, look up Gary V online, it's a perfect example of this, people respect him for it. Interestingly though, scientists have proven that you can change your DNA through your thoughts. Wow, it's a bit out there isn't it? Don't know. <laughs> I don't know how that works. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. I love the science though, Justin. So if there's science behind any of that, I love it. Absolutely love it. There are things on the planet. Find me a link. That'd be great. Post it in the Facebook group. Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash acts on this TV. I would love to read something like that. Um, there are things on the planet that can definitely uh, change your, your DNA in terms of, you know, at a nucleus level. Um, at a, you know, a cellular level like that. So... Uh, I would love to hear about that, that's amazing. So ultimately, I wanted to end on this, and I mentioned this quote before, I think. I um, don't know whether you heard it or not. A quote by Julie Garland, Judy Garland, it's this. It says, always be a first-rate version of yourself instead of a second-rate version of somebody else. And that kind of sums it all up for me. You know, always be a first-rate version of yourself instead of a second-rate version of somebody else. Because if you try to be someone else, you're just so forgettable, aren't you? And ultimately, give me some hearts if you want there to be evidence that you've been on this planet when you are no longer here. You know, the only way you're going to do that is by being unique and giving something different to everybody else. Otherwise, you're just going to be one of that vanilla herd and then you're going to pop your clogs and unfortunately, no one's going to even remember you were here. She's like, that's my ultimate fear. <laughs> that's the one thing I just do not want in life. 
Um, go and um, if you get on iTunes, I release a podcast on Friday, just gone as well. I do a Five to Thrive podcast every Friday. Just go on iTunes on the store, completely free. Search for Act on This TV, all one word, Act on This TV. And I, uh, I did a podcast this week because I've been to a funeral this week. A friend's mum of mine had passed away. Um, a friend of mine's mum had passed away uh, a couple of weeks ago. I went to a funeral on Thursday, and it just made me kind of like not in a in a in a in a morbid kind of way, just reassess what I was doing right now, if I'm doing things the way that I want to be doing them, am I saying yes to myself enough, um, all these kind of things. And I, I, I quote um, a study in that that they did um, of the top five regrets of people who were about to die. So they, they uh, surveyed terminally ill people in hospital uh, who were in palliative care, like end of life care. And they said, you know, what's the biggest regrets of your life? And the number one regret and they all started more or less with, I wish I hadn't. And that's what's so, so sad, isn't it? You know, I wish I hadn't done this, I wish it, or, or you know, or I wish I had, you know, but it's I wish, I wish, I wish. Um, they said, I wish I had lived a life that I wanted to live rather than the life I thought others wanted me to live. And that's, you know, that, that was it. That was the first, the biggest regret of everybody. And the only way on the smiley face from Verona there. The only way that you uh, live a life that you want to live, not the life that you think other people want you to live, is by being authentic. So authenticity, absolutely, is, you know, it's, I say and this is the key to, to acting success, it's just the key to success in general. So we'll recap before we go on the four points um, of why you need to be authentic moving forward. And, and just think about this this week, you've got to do it. So one, decision making becomes a hell of a lot easier when you are being authentic. Number two, if you are not being authentic, you are holding yourself back. Okay, remember, no one's better at being you than you. Who said that? Was that Eeyore out of Winnie the Pooh? Who said that, something like that? Or was it Mr... No, it's not Eeyore, was it? <laughs> Who's the guy who said that? He said something... Dr. Zeus. Something about you are the... You are no one's better than being you than you. I don't know what Eeyore says. I don't know where I got that from. Number three, be authentic and stop living without the fear of being found out. So, Dr. Zeus, that's right, Lee. I thought it was. Um, yeah, so you don't have to be the one hiding in your shop when you <laughs> when I was working in retail, thinking, please don't let anyone from that club come in and find me out. And number four, your DNA will never ever exist again, so don't be vanilla. You know, there's loads of other flavours. Be like, you could be strawberry or chocolate or I don't know, cosmopolitan, Neapolitan. What's it? Is it not cosmopolitan? That's a magazine, isn't it? <laughs> What's it? Is it Neapolitan? You get a bit of each. Or you could be something crazy, like uh, Ben and Jerry's fish food flavour, um, or chocolate brownie flavour, or Oreo flavour, or just whatever, but just don't be vanilla. Be something different um, and something that is unique to you. So I hope you've got some value from that, guys. It's just something that dawned on me today at that read-through. Like I say, Sally Wainwright, look out for this, this drama later on this year. It's called To Walk Invisible, um, and it's great. Sal just did a, an awesome job today. Today you are you, that is truer than true. There is no one alive who is youer than you. Nice one, Lee. Love it, great, that's Dr. Zeus, that's it. I get so confused, I've just got quotes going around my head all the time. Uh, but yeah, just be authentic. Don't, don't apologize for being you, go out there, you know, be the best version of you, the first rate version of you, as opposed to a second rate version of anybody else. Um, and just live, you know, live your life authentically and with purpose. Um, as simple as that. I'll be back on Wednesday, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll be looking at the last, well, the last chapter I'm going to pick out um, of Jack Canfield's The Success Principles. Don't know which one it is yet. I'll leave it as a little surprise for you. Um, if you've not seen any of the previous book clubs we've done on this, go to actonthis.tv. Click on the little menu section. It'll, whoop, it'll slide out. And then you'll see a Periscope section. Click on Book Club. And you go in and you look at all of them. This is like scope number 90. Tonight's Periscope is about scope 97 or something like that. We're nearly at 100 Periscopes, guys. We'll do something special for that. Love when others are the most authentic version of themselves. Great scope. Nice one, Tony. Cheers for tuning in, man. Um, you have to let everyone know on the, on the Facebook group as well, Tony, when you're scoping. And we can all tune in to your scopes as well. Tony does a lot of great Periscopes. Follow him, guys, whilst he's on here. Um, pleasure, Verona. Um, thanks for tuning in. Um, but yeah, join us 10 p.m. Wednesday for Book Club. Um, and then uh, and then next week, yeah, we'll have a new book. Um, maybe we should do Anthony's book, but I was going to do The One Thing by Gary Keller. It's another great book, but maybe we'll look at Tony's book instead. I'll, uh, I'll survey it on Wednesday's scope, see what you guys want to do. So thanks so much. Go out there, live with authenticity, guys. I'll speak to you on Wednesday night. I appreciate you all for watching on the replay. Have a fantastic week, and I'll catch you with you soon. Bye for now.